Yeah, Todoist is on a roll recently. All I have to say is, as a fan of Todoist and as someone who uses it for their personal task management, it's pretty great. But what I'm very appreciative of is the fact that it continues to improve. And in this video, we're gonna dive into the different aspects of Todoist workspaces and what they can mean for you. There's actually an entire webpage on Todoist website talking about it and there is a fair amount of importance to this, so make sure to follow along. So as you notice inside of your Todoist account, this is for teams of any shape and size, but you'll notice that they come with five free projects, and then you can upgrade as your needs grow, and each team will be built separately. So let's do something like Rise Productive, which is the name of my company. And if you want, you can actually turn this on to automatically join your team by using your organization's email, but you also can manually invite people too. So I'm just gonna press Add Team here. Got it. Now you'll notice right here that on this section, we essentially have personal projects that are now separated from team projects. So for me, I have this MRT backlog, which is a backlog of all the different habits that I have. However, we have some different items here like YouTube, which if I wanted to take this project and drag it in here, it would make a lot of sense. Why? Because it is a part of my teamwork. What I mean by teamwork is it's like literally the work that I do for my team at Rise Productive. As you can see here, you also have the ability to change this from only people invited can access and anyone in the workspace can access. I'm gonna put it as anyone can work and you'll notice that it permanently moves it. Now, I cannot move this back. That's what permanently means. And you'll notice there's actually a nice onboarding workflow as Todoist usually has for you to follow in order to set up your team workspaces. So you can invite your teammates to join, you can create your first team project, assign tasks to teammates, make your team's logo. Let's click on this one because that's actually pretty important. So let me click on this. If I go to right here, it will upload to the account. Then you'll notice that if we want to make changes to the account outside of just the logo, we can. First, we can leave the team and reminder that we're in the danger zone here. So we can either leave the team, delete the team, prohibit external guests and turn on the team directory or off the team directory as well as set a domain. Now that's only the case if I was using like my Rise Productive email. My Todoist account was personal and happens to be not inclusive of like a custom business domain. So that's why that's not showing for me. But after that, you'll notice here that the logo basically just has this right here. And if I had a team, I could go to browse all projects and essentially join projects for that team within here that would be created by other persons. And you notice here, when I clicked browse all projects, it essentially is the same as clicking on the top of this, similar to how on the top of my personal, we have all of the projects listed here, which I actually do think is a pretty nice basic view. Now inside these tasks, if I were to create a new one, it's very simple. You can make something like record video tomorrow. And you'll see in the view section, similar to the other lists, since I'm on a pro plan, I can check out either list, board, or calendar. Just kidding, you have to be on the business plan to see the calendar view. Now the calendar plan would actually be the same here if we were to look at my personal item. So you'll notice here that I can't check it out on calendar unless I have a business plan, but it's the literal same view as what you get with the personal plan with the calendar option. Just like I have the board option, uh, we also have the calendar option here for the pro plan. Also a couple of things to note here is that if you do want to take your projects and kind of work them in a more comprehensive format, what you can actually do is add folders here. So I can do something like content production and I can select this project right here and that'll add it. And I also can just grab a uh, this content production item here by clicking on this pressing the three dots again, and once again, um, adding any of them that I want. Now I can't drag these in or out, which you think would be intuitive, but you also can click on this and invite members from here, browse templates in order to create more projects. And there's a lot of different templates to go through, so definitely check these out. I wanted to shout out Francesco D'Alessio, AKA Keep Productive, because he did point out something from Todoist leaks right here, where it's a mock of Todoist weekly calendar view. It seems like what they want to have is a calendar that kind of coincides with what you'd see from a normal calendar app. Now, I personally use Morgan, which already has this kind of functionality, right? With Notion and Todoist and otherwise. So I don't really need this, but for people who want to just have one product, this is actually pretty cool. And I'm genuinely kind of surprised they haven't had it before. Like this isn't necessarily a resounding good job this many years into having the product. I know it's difficult to make software. That's something I'll always hedge. However, good Lord, I mean, this thing's been around forever. I'm not exactly like thrilled about the fact that this is where they're heading, not where they're already at. 
But for all intents and purposes, great job here, Todoist. I hope you liked this video and learned a little bit about Todoist workspaces. It's just a little bit of an update to separate things between your personal and team tasks inside of Todoist and make multiple of those team workspaces. Just like you can enhance your skills using other apps, you check out this video on how to improve your skills using productivity even more.